On July 22, 2016, 15-year-old Leonie Gritzka disappeared without a trace. Despite of several tips to the police, along with a witness statement, claiming that she got into an unknown car, Leonie is still considered missing to this day. It is for good reason one of Germany's most talked about missing person cases. In today's video we are going to be looking at the circumstances of her disappearance. To be exact, we are talking about the wrong decisions made by authorities and a mother's pain and suffering. Leonie's life Leonie was born in 2001 in Remscheid, Germany. Her mother Bianca was just 18 years old when she gave birth to her. She broke up with Leonie's father while she was still pregnant. And right after Leonie was born, he died of an overdose. Leonie never got to meet him. Bianca was now completely alone with the baby. She was overwhelmed and felt helpless and abandoned. She went to a home for young single mothers to get assistance. But because she was so in over her head, it wasn't long before Leonie was taken away from her and the baby became a warden of the state. Leonie did not have an easy childhood. She grew up in a children's home until she was sent to live with a foster family at 6 years old. But that wasn't a good situation either. In fact, Leonie just didn't seem to have any luck with finding stability and happiness anywhere, which is why she ended up switching in and out of different families and homes throughout the next few years. She also kept running away, which only caused her life to spiral out of control even more. During all of this, Leonie was in contact with her mother Bianca and the two had a good relationship. The desire for a home, a stable place to live where she would be cared for and loved was great. And so it happened at the age of 13, Leonie moved back in with her mother. Everything seemed to go well for a while. At least mother and daughter appeared to get along and Leonie no longer ran away from home. However, Leonie had difficulties dealing with her childhood issues and her past along with the roller coaster of emotion that comes along with puberty. So she grew increasingly unhappy. On the outset everything was great, she had a permanent home and a mother who loved her, but she simply was not happy on the inside. Leonie slipped into a depression and became withdrawn. She also started harming herself. At 15, Leonie often dyed her hair, and in social media she finally found a platform to scream her emotions out into the world and find like-minded people. She was very active on Instagram and Snapchat, and especially on Facebook. She posted a lot and made as many friends as she could get. After a short time, she had well over 4,000. At the beginning of 2016, she met a 35-year-old man over the internet. The two seemed to have a connection, and it wasn't long until on January 21st, 2016, Leonie changed her relationship status to in a relationship. Her new boyfriend was most likely the man who was 20 years older than her. In the next few months, Leonie was also seen once around Remscheid in the company of a significantly older man, which would confirm this theory. Leonie's Disappearance At around 4 pm on July 22, 2016, Leonie left the apartment where she lived with her mother. It was a Friday afternoon and the 15-year-old was planning on meeting one of her girlfriends. When she didn't come back late that evening, Bianca began to worry. She sent her daughter a message on WhatsApp, which was delivered but not read or answered. A short time later, Leonie's cell phone was switched off. Bianca then alerted the police. The police tried to piece together the events that afternoon, which led to some interesting findings. Leonie's friends reported that she met her in downtown Remscheid. They walked down the main street and Leonie talked about her new boyfriend, who was already 35 years old. She stated that he was about to pick her up and that she was planning on spending the next week with him. Leonie's girlfriend didn't think much of it at first, but shortly afterwards a car pulled up. The friend first described it as black, but later changed her statement to saying that it was red with a cologne license plate. According to her, two men were in the car. From a distance, she watched one of them get out and greet Leonie with a hug. Then Leonie proceeded to get into the car with them, and the car drove off. Because there was quite some distance between the girlfriend and the car, she could not provide a description of the two men. All she could say was that one of them was wearing a baseball hat. The entire situation gave her such a bad feeling that she would have liked to stop Leonie from getting in. But she decided not to, because after all, Leonie seemed to know and to trust at least one of the men. That was the last time anyone saw Leonie Gritzka. Her cell phone was turned off 
and her friends were also no longer able to get a hold of her. Unfortunately, that also meant that the phone could not be traced. The Investigations Because Leoni was known to the police as a runaway in the past, the authorities only started their search a few days after the missing person report was made. As a result, the most important hours after someone's disappearance were completely wasted, and it was much more difficult to find clues regarding Leoni's whereabouts. By now, the investigators also believed that the crime had occurred. When Leoni had run away in the past, she had always come back fairly quickly, and this time, she didn't have a bag or even her ID with her. There was a fear that the 15-year-old could have been forced into prostitution. Leonie's mother and auntie quickly suspected that Leonie's new boyfriend could be behind this. Bianca only found out about his existence from the police and Leonie's girlfriend. Her daughter herself had never mentioned this new man in her life to her. That, combined with the fact that Leonie had met him on Facebook and that the man appeared to be 20 years older than her, deeply troubled the girl's mother. Bianca was sure that more could be learned from Leonie's Facebook account. After all, the two had written to each other via this social media platform. But unfortunately she did not have the password to access her daughter's account and the police refused to access it for data protection reasons. Because no one knew the name or identity of Leonie's new boyfriend, the investigation stalled and ran cold. Until this day, Leonie Gritzka is missing. This case was often compared to the disappearance of Rebecca Reusch. But in this case, Leonie's Facebook account would likely provide more leads, if Bianca only had the password. Bianca was even in contact with a few hackers over the years, who offered to hack her daughter's Facebook account to dig up some info. A hacker even sent her a selection of different password ones, which she was hopeful to try, but none of them worked. Another anonymous tipster actually found out something new. He was able to hack into Leonie's email account and found out that the account had still been used for quite a while after her disappearance. A new cell phone number had also been added to Leonie's Facebook profile. You now need this number to log into the account. However, this change was not made until about two years after Leonie's disappearance. It's not clear if Leonie herself made these changes or if a third party is responsible for them. But this other person had to have her password in order to access her profile. The cell phone number was provided by the hacker, but the last couple of digits were missing. This is why the owner of the number could not be determined. However, he said that there was a clear connection to Eastern Europe. Of course Leonie's family is devastated. They are scared that their 15 year old fell into the hands of a human trafficking ring and has been forced into prostitution. Bianca, Leonie's mother, has not given up the search for her daughter. She could no longer stand to stay in the apartment that she once shared with her daughter, so she and her partner moved to a new place. However, she has hopes to see her daughter again. In an interview she said, A person just can't disappear without a trace. I just want to hug her again. And this brings us to the end of this shorter video. I wanted to feature Leonie's case on my channel, simply to keep the memory of her disappearance fresh in people's minds. Feel free to share this video with your friends, to alert even more people to Leonie's case. And if you know Leonie, see her anywhere, or have any leads that may help to solve this case and bring her home, please contact the police immediately. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up or leave a comment in the comment section. With only a couple of clicks and a few keystrokes, you have the ability to support this channel tremendously. Follow me on Instagram if you are not doing so already. You can find the link in the video description. Thank you in advance and I also appreciate you for watching. Have a good night and see you soon.